Hello, this is going to be the diptych lecture and it's because all of the images that I am about to share with you are diptychs. There, I don't have any triptychs in this lecture. I'm going to start off by showing you a bunch of my own photographs and talk about my ideas around the concept of a diptych. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I started working on something called dichotomy study. Dichotomies is, is basically like uh, the definition could be the contrast between two things. And so um, I just decided to entitle this whole series uh, Dichotomy Studies, and then there's different numbers. So for example, with these two photographs, it's a picture of my parents um, looking over the edge of the boat into a water, uh, and then a, a photograph of a hallway. So it's, it's kind of about looking uh, portals into different realities, so to speak. So those are some of the things that I was thinking about. And when I was making these photographs, they were um, printed. So I was using a dark room and printing these myself. And some of the work that I made at this time, I was interested in not showing uh, that it was two photographs, knowing that these are obviously not the same environment but really creating kind of like almost a surrealist abstract experience for the viewer. And a lot of these photographs, I wanted the viewer to come up with their own interpretation and feelings, not necessarily completely resonate with um, my own personal significance for the images that I was making at the time. So for example, this image, um, this gentleman is throwing something across the room which to me leads to this bright light, which is a long exposure from a carnival. And so I was really looking at the relationship by bringing two images together, how those two images responded to each other. And hopefully the article that you read will further, these images will also give you more um, ideas to explore with the things that were discussed in the article. So here we have a, a common horizon line throughout the image and both of the images are um, desaturated. There's not like a lot of vibrant colors. And also a lot of my photographs, uh, the concepts were about comparing nature with man-made objects. So here we have these windmills, um, and, you know, of course, the desert. And here we have a fence with a tree that's kind of grown above it. So a lot of my work for me had very specific conceptual considerations, both in what I was visually exploring um, and then also just the, um, like, like, for example, this one. You're looking down. You've got these groupings of tree um, people, excuse me, and here you're looking up. Um, so you have similar kind of um, groupings of the way that the branches and the leaves are collected together. Here you have um, two photographs. This almost, it's a movie theater of the red seats with a picture um, of the ocean. Here, it's a lot about the colors. And again, uh, these kind of, for me, the visual uniqueness of the tree and all the patterns that you see and then looking up that's um, a train station so again like a skylight with patterns and the difference of natural patterns compared to man-made patterns some of my diptychs were primarily about color shape and form um, and so this is a paper mill it's a long exposure at night this is a uh, the bright lights are coming from um, a prison uh, here in California. And so again, the bright lights, to me, it's about this particular pairing is about the color. And it almost looks like this could be underground. So again, like uh, there's a surrealist quality to this work that I was hoping my viewers would, um, would relate to. So um, some of my diptychs are side by side. Some of them are um, stacked on top of each other. I want to give you guys permission. Do whatever works for you. This is an opportunity for you to be creative with this idea of what do the two images say when they come together. So here, this is a picture 
of San Francisco downtown, but it looks like this, you know, it's not underneath. This is a picture of a construction site, but the um, how the viewer might interpret these images that have come together. This is about color, shape, and form. Like I said before, a lot of my work really relates to those ideas of color and you know, kind of bringing two images together and letting the viewer have their own experience. Uh, these two images, um, I, I really like when there's something that lines up that, again, it, it's pretty subtle, but the way that your eye moves through the photo. So here you're looking through this triangle to the moon, and here you've got this reflection in the puddle. For me, those were significant concepts. And this work now, we've moved on to a different body of work called urbanism study. This was looking at mostly construction sites. Again, my interest in how, to me, there's a similarity to construction sites, the way that they're built, and maybe to the way that ants or bees and other animals in nature work with the idea of building. Now I'm just going to show you a bunch of student examples of diptychs. And again, the slideshow is just to give you some inspiration to think about, well, what two images do you want to bring together? And a little to be able to discuss why. So here, um, the, you know, some students take this very literally and they do research. So a student who did this project would interview the people that they were photographing um, to find out, you know, what are the things that are important to them. So she's a musician, she likes to be playful, and this was like a favorite object of hers. Uh, this was about, you know, someone's relationship to smoking, obviously. Uh, this is great. So we've got the ribbon and then the woman sewing, so it's about the details and then the larger um, action, right? Um, this is clearly about an eating disorder, someone who has insomnia. So you might want to start with an idea and then grow from there. This is more about shape and form and color. So I want to give you permission to do whatever you want to do, right? Um, this one's really fun because the photo is turned on its side. So here we've got um, a landscape shot. That's a bird. I think this is downtown San Francisco from quite a few years ago. And then a woman playing jazz, or not jazz, a woman playing an instrument um, in a space, right? But there's no right or wrong with this process. That's why I'm hoping you will take the time to create a diptych that speaks to you. Here we have the wind blowing um, and then the hair blowing, but it really works together. The background is really simple. So with all of the um, action in this lower photo, the simple background, it works together really well. The other thing to consider is if you want to have a space or not between your images. This particular one, the student was kind of thinking about politics and what that means. So here, like I was saying before, do you want to have a space between your images or do you want to have them butted up next to each other? How far apart is that space? Those are things that you can think about. This one, the student was thinking about, well, first of all, there's this common horizon line through the two pictures, but then also what was there before? So before we had all of these houses and apartments and people and urbanism and life there was a lot of water and nature. So you're going to need to decide what path you want to consider with this project and how you want to visually explore these ideas. So these two images, they're right next to each other. And it's again about shape, form, and color. So there's not like the conceptual idea like this student really wanted to think about, well, what was before people? Oh, just nature. Here we've just got this kind of common um, graphic element that's binding these two images together.
that's why the student brought them together. Here it's also just about shape, form, and texture. So we've got water droplets on a window and a bunch of leaves. And again, they're, even though it's very different, there's just that slight similarity of repetition, shape, and form. So you're thinking about what two images go together. Do I want to have them next to each other or do I want to have a space in between? Here, the common idea again is more about the content of the photo and something that's structural, um, maybe emotional or aesthetic, but not conceptual. So you have the wires of the telephone poles that connect the wires, and then you have the strings of the guitar. What also works well about this image is the bold colors that are opposite each other, pink and blue. They're not complementary colors because um, blue and yellow would be complementary and pink is kind of similar to magenta and so green is complementary. However, they're still very different so they, it creates that bold reaction. I don't remember what the student's ideas are here. And it could have just simply been what's happening in the photo, what's the action, right? And then the color, and there's, you know, no pattern, pattern. So there's lots of different ways to approach how you want to interpret this project and then what two images you want to arrange and pair together. This one was um, the student's, these are her, was her grandmother's hands. This is window light. And then uh, this was the year that her grandmother was born uh, on some sort of a simple background. Both of these images are exquisite examples of minimum depth of field. This is simply about color, shape, and form. So these are just a bunch of candies and then some shirts, but there's similar colors and your mind and your eye, again, there's that psyche comp, uh, consideration. How do you want the viewer to kind of trip out for a second with this, with these images that you're bringing together? Um, this is a great connection. Um, and I think that the, the spacing again between the two images is really up to you. But here we've got a common color. So your eye is being led through the photo and then also a common, um, content, right? Uh, the goats obviously can give goat milk. And I'm, there we go. Um, no separation between the two photos. And this is just also, again, about color. And so we've got a green van. And then, you know, again, this could allude to what's underneath the street. Anytime you put something beneath something, the viewer, I think, organically, naturally is going to think, oh, especially with this, in this particular one where there's a street, kind of playing around with what could be underneath, what we can't see, and then just, you know, bringing it to this creative visual perspective. This is also about color. So we've got crayons stuck in the sand, and then you've got a photograph of someone's toenails painted the same color. Strawberries make strawberry smoothies, right? So this could be about color. It could be about process. Um, you need the strawberries to make a strawberry smoothie. So it just depends upon what you want to explore. This is again, very straightforward. So we've got the artist making the drawing and then a detail of the drawing. This was about inside outside, right? Um, and so you've got the outside of the laundromat and then a detail shot of the quarter machine. But what's also bringing them together is the similar colors, right? And the graphic sensibility and the um, formal qualities of the composition. Um, and you also have two different size images, right? So here you've got a horizontal. Um, I always get horizontal and vertical messed up. You have a, um, uh, you have a detail shot with a further, a further back shot. You have a portrait shot with a landscape uh, view. 
and you can still bring them together. So there's a lot of different ways that you can play around with these ideas. And of course, this is a vertical shot and a horizontal shot. This is about color and interest, right? So this student was really interested in cars and photography. So they brought them together in their diptych. This uh, started with the idea of um, missing a loved one who's in the military, waiting for them to come home. Another example of a, a landscape photograph next to a portrait photograph with a space in between. You can make your pictures whatever size you want. You can crop them to um, make sure that the information in your images meets your ideas, right? So this is kind of cropped to a square, this is more rectangular, but the similarity of color of the eye was the student's ideas. Keeping the background really simple is also very important. Here's another great idea where you have a detail of uh, the skateboard and then the actual skateboard, so like a larger view, putting it into context. I just really like this image and I can't even totally explain why. I don't remember the ideas behind the student's work, but the colors, um, the intentionality of the composition with the horizon line going along with this deck or whatever this is, a uh, vista point, this couple. Uh, so the overall composition, it's uh, asymmetrical if we divide it in half. Uh, it's also kind of rule of third shape and form. And maybe it's just the common color and then these lines with the lines of the porch, uh, the dress and the shirt, which equals the couple, male and female. Again, like there's just these, all these really interesting unconscious connections for me that come together with these two photos. This one's pretty obvious, right? We're also, the photographer is manipulating the shutter speed, maybe using some rack focus, which we've talked about, right? And so the, you've got a minimum depth of field and again, your eye just automatically gravitates towards that concept of the bullseye. This is about color and lifestyle, right? So Easy Rider, this is a great movie. Um, gosh, I think it's from the 60s maybe, mid 60s. And then American Spirit, which are cigarettes, right? And the, when this movie came out, everybody was smoking. And so kind of like that lifestyle thing. And, and again, thinking about just putting the pack of cigarettes on like a yellow sweater, simplifying your ideas. The colors of the flowers and then um, the makeup and, and doing a little bit of all of that was the students' uh, interest, fashion and comparing fashion and beauty. And then this is a great one as well. So you've got a long exposure with the car lights on the road and then a stop sign. So the idea about, you know, I mean, this could be an advertisement for DMV, like, you know, be careful when you drive or don't drive too fast or be thoughtful drivers. So that is the examples that I have and talking a little bit about either the students' ideas or my own ideas around creating a diptych and thinking about both um, the color connection uh, the conceptual or the ideas behind why the two photos have come together, thinking about the space in between, um, and I really look forward to seeing the work that you make. Thanks. Keep me posted with questions.